Oh yes, folks, it's that time again where we jump back into the waters of a Cronenberg and we're talking Brandon this time, that's right. Only a few months ago did we talk about Crimes of the Future on this channel. A film I feel like I liked more than other people. So when his little son, little Brandon over here is like, Daddy, guess what? I like your movies. I want to make some weird shit too. I'm always excited. I've liked a lot of Brandon's work. It's very interesting. And Infinity Pool feels like the next logical step in his filmmaking experience. So here we are. It played at Sundance, I think, a couple of weeks before it actually came to cinemas. Word of mouth was interesting. A lot of people, like, they kept the scene in. Did they take that scene out? That kind of stuff. The buzz about this movie was really talked about, something that was huge and just interesting. You have Mia Goth, who is, I think, blowing up and becoming one of the best actresses of her generation. So you have all that in this one movie from a Cronenberg baby. What are we going to get as the experience? I'm here to tell you, Infinity Pool is interesting. Now, I, I can't really say if it's the best Cr Brandon Cronenberg movie. It's definitely one you could argue. There's stuff explored here that's really fun. I think there's a sincerity and earnestness to this more than some of the other works, where it feels like, oh yeah, I'm comfortable enough to let there be breathing room. And maybe that becomes the problem for some people. When there is the breathing room that you have, it loses track of itself a little bit. This is not a perfect film. I think there are certainly issues you can find in the story, in the layout of the film, that really just make it kind of drag for a minute, but it's a very compelling, very interesting setup. There is something to say about 2023's audience and what they want to see. We're slowly moving into this era where people are more comfortable with, like, let's do sex again. You know, we had that moment where people were like, we can't have sex on screen. It sucks. And I think an audience is generally more accepting of that now. So this movie kind of had that initial push from Sundance, like, it's kind of hedonistic and sensual and insane in that capacity. And while it has all those things, maybe because my expectations were like, oh, yeah, it's just going to be orgies upon orgies of hedonistic behavior and these freaks just doing all this stuff there is some of that not to the extreme i would say a general audience is expecting i could clearly see a cut of this film at a 14a rating as opposed to the 18a rating that it has which is fine but what it does with its 18a rating i think is way more interesting than what an action movie or a more coerced movie would do if it's higher rating because it's giving you visuals that are off-putting, giving you story beats that are off-putting. Very specific moments are going to be in or outs for an audience where it's like, okay, I'm on board for that. Don't like that one. There's one in particular that I was so happy I saw in a movie like this because I'm like, yeah, there's no way they would do this. And like a big studio would do it, if that makes sense. Even if a big studio was like doing an R-rated thing, but Neon's like, okie dokie, here you go. <laughs> Sticking that in there. I love it very impressive now i don't want to get too deep into the weeds on the spoilers i'll just say this we follow alexander skarsgård who is this kind of failed writer trying to reinvent himself and figure out inspiration while in this really fascinating like resort in, in a really war-torn kind of like you know cartelish country he meets this really interesting woman named mia goth they hit it off and she takes him on this weird adventure the thing about both of those characters is that they are married to other people so it kind of becomes like this eyes wide shut esque adventure and then i know what you did last summer kind of esque adventure while doing like a point break esque adventure it, it does a lot and it all balances out pretty perfectly mainly because the two leads are so compelling in this movie Skarsgård is a guy I I utterly adore him he is so committed to whatever role he is in that he'll put himself in a compromising position with dignity and grace and if they need him to cry or just have like a bunch of drool down his face or just bark like an animal he's willing to do that he's committed to that there are so many things that could have gone wrong with this performance that he brings an elegance and class to it in every level a beautiful performance is it his best hard to say it's certainly not the worst you have seen him but again mia goth is a woman i i adore pearl was one of my favorite movies of 2022 her performance in that movie was my favorite performance of the year and you just see she is willing to escalate her own kind of personality of this kind of like ditzy lady into this new era where every time she's on screen you are drawn to her you are captivated by her you're in love with her and you're like i could definitely be compromised in every situation she says bark i'm barking but you're also just kind of like i'm scared of you and afraid of how you're going to act 
there are some very hammy lines that she is given and it's a very hammy performance that she does later on in the movie and that is going to be a huge deterrent for some people like this is bad but i'll argue you this what she is doing no other actress could do to the level she's doing it on she is also as fearless as skarsgård where if the role is demanding her to be compromising be vulnerable be intense be subjugated to a certain effect that you wouldn't see she'll do it and when you have both of those personalities bouncing off each other it just works in a beautiful harmony because it's like there are two performances again where it could like they couldn't jive you could feel them like maybe not connecting or they're just clashing against each other but they just connect intertwine and make a beautiful experience horny movie sexy movie beautiful goff has never looked sexier i don't know why i was just obsessed with every outfit she had in this movie and then it plays into some really weird ideas of just like it's it's this is gonna be a weird comparison i don't know if other people have made it before i'm going to compare parts of this to a very extreme version of the white lotus where it's like here are these people coming to this resort who are indoctrinating the, their ideas into the locals and the locals are having to put up with what they are doing something like that where you know white lotus is more of a comedy but that kind of becomes like an element of infinity pool where you have these hedonistic people escaping their reality whatever it may be coming to this resort to essentially just be these monsters these animalistic tribal creatures just messing about and doing weird stuff and then the movie throws you into this kind of like science fiction element of storytelling where now I, I don't know if it's a spoiler i'll just say kind of loosely there is this idea of cloning that comes into play and how that plays into what you're willing to do as a person it doesn't explore like the side effects or just like what is real what is fantasy aspect of the world which you don't have to do i get that that's not the point we're just here to have a crazy good time and have this normal writer lose his mind slowly that's what we're doing and that is compelling to some people that is the thing of a cronenberg movie whether it's daddy or baby that's going to be hard for some people to sell but there is really hammy dialogue delivered perfectly from the actors in this the camera movement is really shocking to me i wasn't expecting to be so high frame so if you look at the screen that i'm on now I have it so my face is kind of like in the center of the frame, higher up, so you're getting like a wider mid shot of my body. A lot of the frames in this movie have it lower, so you kind of see where like where these bottom shelves are in frame. That is where a lot of the action is happening in the wide shots. It makes for like some big expansive stuff overhead and just a more closed off area down below. And it's a very fascinating technique that I don't know why he chose to do that. I certainly wouldn't make that decision for a movie like this. There's one scene in particular where you just see like a cart just literally driving so low and then we just kind of like, you know, pan down to see it. It's a really interesting shot that really makes this movie stand out visually in a compelling way. Even just like the beginning when we're rotating on like a drone and the, the camera is just flipping 180. It's very bizarre. But it, I guess it, it just adds to the experience of what we're going for. And that in itself is kind of unique and fun. Very interesting movie i have complaints but i was captivated for about the first hour it kind of drags in the middle but hey i love me a good horny sexy time look at these freaks being freaks what more do you want that's what i want two actors i'm adoring and i love everything they do this is a good movie it's very interesting is it perfect no but it's definitely if you're looking to watch something between now and ant-man I cannot say you shouldn't watch it because there is definitely something in there. And maybe you'll see some stronger themes like I'm saying. Maybe there is some like nepotism involved in that. Maybe there's something about like being a broken writer and how story messes you up. All that kind of bullshit. Either way, it's very interesting. What is death? What is real? What is love? Mia Goff slays. I'm going to give Infinity Pool a 6 out of 10. Now, thank you guys for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Hive. And I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.